fancy schmancy. That's, wow. That's new. That's new. I've never had that happen before. This no, meeting is either. being recorded. I guess it's a warning to everybody. So if you don't want your faces recorded, you can click your face off and put your. No, well, I had to click continue. Did you? Yeah. Yep. Continue or leave. Yeah. Yeah. So. I, I guess we're taking privacy issue very well. So, okay, here we go. Today, we're going to talk about puppet warp, split warp, which nobody has ever heard of. And we're going to talk about content aware scale, which are three really cool things to use in Photoshop. So let's go ahead and get started. And I'm going to go to desktop so we can see what's going on. Make this small down at the bottom right. And open the first image. That's not the one I want. This is the one I want. <laughs> He's back. <laughs> He's back. I haven't seen the dinosaur for quite some time, so I figured I'd use him again. Um, my buddy here, Dini, Dino, um, is going to be our test subject for a little bit just to show a couple of things with the puppet warp. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to make a selection of him. So I'm just going to go up to select subject at the very top. I have my W key selected, which is the object selection tool, magic wand tool and quick selection. Um, so it automatically brings up select subject, click on select subject, and it doesn't do a very bad job of selecting my subject. Well, if you can see the missed a little bit here, so we'll add some just to get him all the way in, just for fun. And I hit uh, Command Plus to zoom in and zoom out with Command Zero. And let's go to Select a Mask, we'll do it really fast. Okay, I like what it is. Hit Enter, puts it on its own layer with the layer mask, which makes it really easy for me. So everything I do is gonna be a breeze. So let's zoom in just a little bit. And I'm going to hit the Puppet Warp. And to get to Puppet Warp, you go to Edit, down to Puppet Warp. Edit to Puppet Warp. Click on Puppet Warp, and it brings up all these little um, I don't know what to call them. Little awesome. spots for control points. Thank you, Other control webs. points. Um, there's a couple of different settings up at the very top. You have normal, rigid, and distort. I'm going to keep it in normal. Density right now is set to normal. Um, you have normal, fewer points, and then you have more points. I like it in more points because I can do a whole lot more with it. Um, and I'm just going to mess Right now, I'm going to mess with the head. So I'm going to freeze everything but the head. So I'm going to click on control points to basically freeze everything down below. So what are you doing? You're clicking. Are you holding the control? I'm, just, I'm clicking on areas that I want to freeze. So hopefully, if it goes right, nothing below the neck will move. If I click in the middle of the jaw there, and let me undo that one, and click the back of the neck, I'm going to try and, if everything goes right, open the mouth a little bit. Do the same thing with the bottom jaw. Are you holding anything when you do that? You're just clicking I'm and using drag. I'm using my mouse and clicking and dragging. OK. So it, I can bend the elbow on the left arm here. So I'm going to click at the elbow. Then I'm going to click on the paw or the claw, whatever, and drag it down. Drag, 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 drag. And let's move the foot here. 
And you can stretch them out as you do this too. So like the tail is clicked there to hold it. We're going to bend it and stretch it. So let's lock that in and we'll do a quick before and after. So let's open him up. So you can see how easy it is to play with. Um, the puppet warp tool is just unbelievably strong and things it can do. Um, yep. Now, Michael, it looks like it got rid of your mask when you did that. I still have a mask there. But it, but it's no longer an active mask by the looks of it. Yeah, it's, no it's longer cut out. You know what? You're right. I see that. OK. So so part because I was about to ask, it, does the mask warp with with your puppet warp? But it looks like it gets rid of the mask and just gives you a transparent background. Well, let's find out. I'm going to paint. Yeah, it just gave me. It just cleared the mask and applied it by the looks of it. Yeah. Well, that's bizarre. I didn't even notice that. Thank you. Okay. So that in a in a really quick view is Puppet Warp. So let's go ahead, close him out. And the thing he likes to eat is cars. So let's bring in a car. I just have to say, wow, I hadn't seen that done before. So you had it, me at open mouth. <laughs> it's amazing what it can do. Wow, um, I didn't know. Just to let you know, I've already pre-cut out this car. Um, I was working on a project and I needed a Jurassic Park car. So I was looking for a yellow, either Jeep or Ford or some type of SUV. So I've already cut them out so I don't have to do that. And we'll go to edit. In fact, let's do this. Command J, we'll put another layer on. Ah. So that way we can go back and forth. Let's go to edit puppet warp. And right now it's set to normal. I will play with normal for a while and see what happens. Um, I'm not worried about freezing anything on this because what I want to Okay, that didn't work. I knew to need to freeze something. And the mask went away again. That's weird. Yeah, let me hide that layer. Let's go to Puppet Warp. As soon as I click on it, I think, yeah, the mask goes away. It just applies the mask. So let's, okay, cool. Fine, be that way. And what I'm doing is just clicking on spots and pulling it down. Is that where the dinosaur is stepping? Either right. stepping, <laughs> stepping or biting or. <laughs> and all I'm doing is just dragging the dots inward. Um, totaling this car out really quick. Triple A would be so happy with you. I was just thinking <laughs> the same thing. <laughs> My insurance claim. There you go. That, hey, take a picture <laughs> of your car and do this to it and get a free check. <laughs> <laughs> then just hit enter and your car is crunched. <laughs> Michael, you want to, might want to go back and erase that 20 seconds of that video here. <laughs> I, yeah. would, I would never do that we can edit it after the fact <laughs> yeah hmm. but that's so easy to do you got before and after nice before car oopsies after 
and I, I did a thing where the dinosaur was actually biting the car and it scored a 78. So <laughs> I didn't, I didn't play any more with it, but it's cool what you can do with that. Um, let's go back to beginning. So we'll go to image. I thought there was a revert up there. Yeah, if you were doing it's under this, file, Mike. Going to be in it's under file, screen. okay. Yeah, about halfway down. That you started Five, yeah. with, would you have to rebuild your background? Um, if you put this on a separate layer, you can do this without touching the background. Um, I'd have to rebuild. That, but now if you go back onto that image where your subject came from that you've manipulated. Are you going to have to rebuild your background all in around the areas that have been, shall we say, removed? <laughs> um, if it's on its own layer, you should be OK. Let's go ahead and we'll go back up. Everything on the original background is still there. OK, let's go ahead and in close the rest of the car. Here, well, let me go ahead and I'll add a background just uh, let's see. Close that out. Go to stock photos. Go to textures. And let's put that as a texture inside of. So place, right click on it, place in Photoshop. Currently busy. Of course you are. You're always busy. Let me redial. Place in Photoshop. Put it below. Command T to make it fit. Now the car is on its own layer, which is cool. So we'll go to the car layer. I will apply the layer mask by right clicking on it. Click apply layer mask. So it's by itself. Go to edit. Puppet warp. And we'll do more points, lock in a couple of places there so it doesn't run around on me, crunch it really fast. Dang, I'm getting good at destruction. I think you've had practice at destruction. <laughs> he didn't have much time on his hands. <laughs> the, the background layer is still what it was. If you have like in my case, probably have to flatten it. If uh, you got the original version, yeah, the whole background would have to be replaced because it would. You have the car and it. Whoops, you got the rest of the car here that didn't get crunched. So the answer to the trivia question is, it doesn't mess with the background if it's on its own layer. But if it's if you have something behind it like this that you use to start with, you'd have to replace it or do something to it. Does that you answer think the content aware fill would work with that? Uh, you probably a whole lot of clone stamp to make it work, or what you could do maybe is go to that layer, um, which is the car by itself. So let's see. No. Let's apply layer mask. We will command or control click on the thumbnail, which selects the car. I don't know if this is going to work or not. Let me try. A... This is a test. The emergency broadcast system. Yeah, that's not going to work for me. So I was trying to look at a shortcut to try and take take that car out. But what you could do is use the clone stamp now that you got the selection and use the trees to kind of take out the car. And then drop the car back. Well, get rid of that one. 
and then drop the car back in. Obviously, it's going to take a lot to clone that thing out, so. Better for putting on a new background. Yeah, definitely. Add my background, there you go. You know, drop in a street or some type of image. Let's do this, Command T. Oops. Command T. There we go, that's more realistic. Or it crashed upside down. Obviously, if this is an image you're doing for somebody else, you could photograph with the car there, then get the car out and have just the background. Yeah. And use that without the car, but you have to set that one up, obviously. And what I did is I just went by and I uh, like that car click and moved on. So, okay. So let's go ahead and go back to open. Got my layers. And what we want to show now is what's called the split warp. You're going, what? So what? what? What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Command T, which is my favorite free transform. And you can see it's got the transformation bounding box set up for it. I'm going to right click and go to warp. So now I can warp the image using the warp tool and do all kinds of funky stuff to it. But I don't want to use the warp tool. I want to use the split warp tool. And what I did just now, I already hit the warp tool. So let's go back a step, undo the free transform. So Command T, right click, warp, right click, split warp. I can do split warp crosswise, and that gives me um, crosshairs in there, it gives me both vertical and horizontal. And I can also do split warp horizontal, and I can put the horizontal where I want it, or I can do split warp vertical and put the vertical where I want it. You can see the blue line there. So you can put these anywhere you want to go. Let me hit escape and get back out of that. Command T, right click warp, right click, we'll do split warp vertically. So I'm going to put a warp at the front of the back door and I'm going to do the same thing, split warp vertically, put one at the back of the back door, and I'm going to drag. Oh, now it's a limo. Drag this and make it a limo. You can see it's a little bit warped at the top. Look at that tire in the back. <laughs> yeah, hey, you got meats on there. It reminds me of the days when I had a, a Camaro with some serious tires on there. But you can see it also stretched out the door handle there, stretched out the tire a little bit. Um, you got to be careful how you use this and where you use it. Um, make it look like it's rearing up and ready to go. Wrong, wrong. Wow. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, that's on video. <laughs> We're having fun now. You gotta have fun with it. I mean, mm -hmm. if you got a client you're showing off to, you gotta show them that you know what you almost what you're doing. So let's bring it back up to normal. Um, and you just play and have fun with it. Figure out what you want to do. That's the split warp. Um, with the split warp, we can do Command T, warp. Split warp horizontal, I put it there. Split warp horizontal, put it at the roof line, and then drag the roof up. <laughs> Michael, when you're when you're doing this, is there any way to freeze things like that door handle to keep that from actually stretching? I don't know. 
I don't think there is. Um, maybe if you use free transform to do something like that, oh, not free transform, but um, liquify. I'm not sure that would help at all. You could try it like freeze the or shrink the door handle back down using the one of the tools. Right. Or you could copy it from the original layer and paste it back in the right size. Yeah. <laughs> Use the pucker tool. Uh, it looks like a George <laughs> Barris special. <laughs> I, I just say it looks like a modern version of a pacer. Yeah, no kidding. Oh, gosh. For those of us old enough to remember the pacer. Uh, the ugly pacer. Okay, let's go back to where we started with open. This time, we're going to go to content aware scale. So edit content aware scale. I had to find it again. It's right here under edit content aware scale about halfway down. There is a shortcut there, which is basically the entire keyboard and the letter C, all the modifiers and letter C. Um, with this, you can not work. Okay. Hit escape. I'm trying to remember. I haven't done this for a long time. I need to redo it and practice. So let's go ahead and do this. Apply layer mask. And then we'll do the select that. So command on the uh, thumbnail will select just the truck. Edit content aware scale. And let's go ahead and bring the back end in a little bit. I'll bring the front end in a little bit. You have to do you have to hold shift down or anything? No, I'm not holding anything down right now. Okay. It's kind of scaling it as it does it, which is not what I want. So let's undo the command D to deselect. We'll do the same thing over again. Edit content aware scale. There we go. Smart car. It's now a smart car for sure. You can hold the shift key down to make sure it goes in a straight line. Um, if you hold the option key down, it'll go um, a little wonky. I don't know why it's doing that, but there's your smart car. Progress, transform. Ba -na 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 -na. And, and, wow. Okay. It doesn't want to play right now. There we go. Okay, that's your smart car out of that car. Yeah. Let's go to undo and we'll do edit content aware scale. And I do the same thing again. We're going to make it a limo. That's why they call them stretch limos. Arr, arr, arr. Arr, arr. <laughs> and let's try one thing real quick. I'm experimenting as I go right now. Let's go ahead and do the same thing again. Edit content aware scale. I had the back end selected. So what it did, it just did the back end. Undo, deselect. And what you can do if you want to make a huge scale is do a crop. 
and drag your crop out. Hit enter. And then just, you'll notice in my crop tool that I have no selection up there. I just extended the crop out and dragged it out. So then we'll do the edit content aware scale. And you see it does kind of screw things up a little bit. But that's fixable with the eraser tool, which I never use. Go to the eraser tool, erase out my boo boo there, and everything's perfect. Use a hard edge eraser on the back tire just for fun. So we now made a limousine out of the Ford. So that's pretty much, those work pretty easily for you really quick. Um, let's go back to open a flower, open, open, open. And we'll do edit, won't do a puppet warp because it has to be on its own layer. So let's do command J. Edit Puppet Warp. Let's add a whole bunch of points, so we'll make more points. Hold everything in place here so it doesn't flip around or spin. And we'll just take this the edge of this flower. And you can start stretching out your flower to do some alterations to it, change the type of flower that it is, just using the puppet warp. And you can do all kinds of weird stuff to it. So that is the puppet warp and the split warp and the content aware scale. Um, does anybody have any questions on that? You got to have a question or two. I've got questions. <laughs> you can ask well, why don't you them. ask your questions? <laughs> <laughs> Because I can't answer my questions. But maybe somebody here can. What the hell did I just do? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> there, there is a freeze. There's a way to freeze it using channels. Um, Colin Smith did a video on that. It's on YouTube. So if you want to freeze your stretch as you're doing it, you can using the, um, the channel selections which I've only seen it done once. And so I can't really show you how to do it because I'm not proficient at it. I could try, but it might be a bomb. Anthony, good to see you this afternoon. Glad you can make Thank it. Thank you very much. Well, all of you are here. Welcome to America, Washington. Yep. Any questions at all? Okay, let's do this. I'm going to stop recording.